Good morning. Welcome to All Saints Episcopal Church in Worcester, Massachusetts. I'm so glad that you're here to join us for our worship today and invite you to participate as fully as you are able. And um, there's a bulletin link in, this, in the chat box on our Facebook page and also on our web page as well. Today is a day in the country that is observed as Juneteenth, and that's the day that commemorates the news reaching Galveston, Texas of the release of those enslaved persons two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. It's an important day in the history of our country. It's an important day to witness the, the importance of freedom and the evil of slavery. And so we remember that today and we'll incorporate that into our service as we go through. So we begin our service. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and to peace to his have perpetual love and reverence for your holy name, for you never fail to help and govern those whom you have set upon the sure foundation of your loving kindness, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And now we'll hear readings from scripture. A reading from the first book of Samuel. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine, Saul said to David. You are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came, took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine should be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. 
David said, the Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, go and make the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a cloak of mail. <clears throat> David strapped Saul's sword over the armor and he tried in vain to walk, but he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, am I a dog that you've come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, you come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth so that all of the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for his battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When a Philistine drew near to meet David, David ran quickly toward the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hands in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 9, 9 through 20. We will read in unison. The Lord will be a refuge for the oppressed, a refuge in time of trouble. Those who know your name will put their trust in you, for you never forsake those who seek you, O Lord. Sing praise to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim to the people, peoples the things he has done. The avenger of blood will remember them. He will not forget the cry of the afflicted. Have pity on me, O Lord, see the ministry I suffer from those who hate me. O you who lift me up from the gate of death, so that I may tell you all your praises and rejoice in your salvation in the gates of the city of Zion. The ungodly have fallen into the pit they dug, and in the snare they set is their own foot caught. The Lord is known by his acts of justice, the wicked are trapped in the works of their own hands. The wicked shall be given over the grave, and also the people that forget God. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, and the hope of the poor shall not perish forever. Rise up, O Lord, let not the ungodly have the upper hand. Let them be judged before you. Put fear upon them, O Lord, let the ungodly know they are but mortal. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. As we work together with Christ, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, At an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. 
but as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way. Through great endurance and afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken frankly to you, Corinthians, our heart is wide open to you. There is no restriction in our affections, but only in yours. In return, I speak to children, open wide your hearts also. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. On that day, when evening had come, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the waves beat into the boat, so that the boat was already being swamped. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him up and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Peace, be still. Then the wind ceased, and there was a dead calm. He said to them, Why are you afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? The Gospel of the Lord. 
Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel lesson and the first lesson from Samuel give us similar pictures of events and circumstances which seem just too large, too big, too insurmountable. The boy David facing the giant warrior Goliath. Jesus and the disciples, actually more so the disciples, facing the storm, thinking that they're doomed. So big, so huge. In both cases, that which was huge and seemingly insurmountable was overcome by something simple. David, all the soldiers, the, <laughs> the warriors from the Israelites who were more than happy to let this boy go forward for them and take on the, the giant Goliath, they were putting on armor and giving him big heavy weapons, things much too outsized and wrong for him, for David. He didn't know how to use these things. He had not been trained as a warrior, and he's in all this oversized stuff. And he ends up taking it all off and using what he had, what he was familiar with and what he was comfortable with. As a shepherd who faced the danger of wolves, he used a slingshot. Not that kind that we grew up as kids, but a sling, a long um, fabric or something, then spin around and let it go. That's what he was familiar with. That's what he was comfortable with. And so that's what he decided to use. And of course, he was ridiculed by Goliath himself. He was ridiculed by the others around. And yet it worked. When we are facing problems or issues that seem insurmountable, we spend a lot of time putting on oversized armor, putting on worry, putting on other plans and strategies and calculations, when sometimes all that is needed is simply a clear-headed, direct approach. When we have issues with another person, whether it's a a friend, a family member, a colleague, or perhaps even a stranger. We think of all these other things, way we can arm ourselves and brace ourselves for a, for a confrontation. When in fact what is often needed is simply a, a word of, can we talk? Can we iron out our differences? Can we highlight and understand where the issues and conflicts are? Are we using the same information? How many conflicts are based on misunderstanding or different uses of the same terms? Sometimes we forget and we're bracing ourselves for a huge confrontation when all it needs is a simple conversation. The disciples in the boat fearing that they were getting swamped and again, it's the same metaphor of life's circumstances and events which can seem so overwhelming and we'll never make it out, we'll never survive this. And they go to Jesus and say, don't you care? And his response was, peace, be still. And how important that is for us to remember when we're all agitated and upset about something. We cannot find a way out until we settle down. Until we regain our objectivity. Until we slow the pace. Take a deep breath. Understand the problems and the issues. And then look for a way to go forward. The storm that is within us. That storm of fear that storm of anxiety, that storm of panic, can swamp the boat until through prayer 
or through meditation or through just the realization that we're spinning out of control. Slow down. Peace. Be still. Quiet the storm. And then find a way through. Today, as I said earlier, many places around the country are observing Juneteenth. And Juneteenth is a particularly important day of observance because it commemorates a time in the history of Texas, particularly Galveston, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation freed those persons who were enslaved in the country. Those who were enslaving in that part of Texas prevented word from getting to those who were enslaved and forced them to work for an additional two and a half years. Cruelty upon cruelty the obscene part of this, it goes beyond words. How people can enslave another, how they can torture, beat, and kill another with no sense of consequence, no sense of moral conversion, it's a part of our history that we have to look at, that we have to acknowledge. It is a storm that still exists within our society and our country. It is a storm that flashes in so many different ways through prejudice and through the racist activities that we see all around us. It is a storm that still brews. And we fight and we argue and the storm rages on. The words of Jesus come back, peace, be still. Calm down and address one another with dignity, with respect, with the intention of reconciliation, the intention of healing, the intention of moving forward. Our prayer is about intention. It is, it is about the value of every human being. To acknowledge the mistakes to acknowledge where we went wrong, to make amendment, to make correction, to set a new course. We have that opportunity. But we live in a time when no one wants to admit they're wrong. No one wants to admit any failure or any shortcoming. We would rather fight than admit error. When we admit error, we then take on the responsibility to make an amendment, to make amends. As followers of Jesus, we take upon ourselves a radically new way of looking at conflict, at looking at relationships, which includes the intention of healing, the intention of justice and kindness, the intention of admitting error and seeking reconciliation. It is a storm that can be quieted through calm talk, calm understanding, and decision to move forward in healing and in God's grace and love. The story of Jesus and the boat. As the storm rages, they see him sleeping. And sometimes in our own storms, we wonder, where is God? Why isn't, why isn't God acting? Why isn't God doing something? It turns out that it's our storm. And it's not until we approach Jesus and ask, help, that the calmness begins and the storm begins to quiet down and the way forward seems clearer. 
it's important to remember that. It's important to have days that focus and refocus our attention on our mission as Christians. Our mission as human beings and our mission as neighbors and a society for healing and health and wholeness. We can move forward. We can sail this boat. There's a symbol, a very important symbol in churches. I can't turn the camera up for you, but the ceiling of most churches is how it arches and comes to a point. And this section of the church is called the nave, which is from the Latin nave, which means boat. So we have here a very real symbol of a boat. This is the boat that we as a community sail through life. And even when the storm is around us, this boat, this ship, keeps us safe because the captain of the ship, the one who is really steering this ship, is telling us to be calm, to be at peace, and to trust that the love of God will see us through whatever storm there is. And like the disciples, we can say, who then is this? That can, he, can, that can even, the, even the wind and the sea obey him. It's our way forward through prayer and through the quiet reflection and the purposeful intention of healing. Amen. Please join me in reading the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now we'll continue with the prayers of the people. The prayers of the people will be according to Form 3. During the pauses, please add your own petitions, either silently or aloud. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. <clears throat> Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy may we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. 
for all affected by coronavirus around the world, for health care workers and those at risk, for those who don't feel safe, and those whose safety we take for granted, for world leaders, health organizations, and researchers, that we may work together, protect one another, and serve the common good with patience, love, and fortitude. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for all who are sick, especially those listed on our prayer list and anyone we name at this time, either silently or out loud. We pray for all those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Connor Higgins, Stephen Pye, Linda Johnson, Jim Flynn Jr., Marge Azu, Judith Freeman Clark, Jason Cook, John Apostomato, Renee Whitenet, and James M. Berry. We pray for all who have died, remembering anyone we name at this time, either silently or out loud. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy. Sustain and support the anxious. Be with those who care for the sick and lift up all who are brought low, that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Again, I want to welcome you to our service and invite you to participate in the blessing of the bread and the wine and juice. And if you'd like to have some bread and wine or juice off to the side, when I receive, I'll invite you to receive with me. Again, it's a pleasure to welcome you to our service, and now we'll have some announcements from our vestry. Good morning, All Saints. Here are today's announcements. All Saints Online International Film Festival, Gifts of the Spirit, will continue next Sunday, June 27th at 9 a.m. Join us for a selection of short films, followed by guided discussions. The Zoom link will be provided in the Thursday email, or you may join us in the church library. We are continuing to collect non-perishable food to be distributed to local food banks. Donations can be dropped off in the church office Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. or in the back of the church on Sundays. A weekly sign up for in-person services is provided in the Thursday email where you can call the office at 508-752-3766 or email churchoffice at allsaintsw.org. The office will con continue on summer hours starting on Monday, June 22nd. I will be here from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m., Monday through Friday. And finally, if you find our ministry sustaining and would like to help, you can give support online at allsaintsw.org giving or mail your pledge to All Saints, 10 Irving Street, Worcester, Mass, 01609. Thank you and have a great day. Consider all the worlds that 
my hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. I call throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I walk, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees. When I look down from lofty mountain grandeur, and hear the brook, and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God to how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God is Son, Sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul. My Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Shout of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart? Then I shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim, My God, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, for you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
Holy and gracious God, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and creator of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O God, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. The gifts of God for the people of God. If you're receiving communion at home, I invite you to join me now. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Jesus is nigh, O our foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my sight. Angels descending bring from above echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. The fix of mission, all is at rest. The Savior and happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior. The day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Hallelujah.